Hello everyone. I, I hope that you are all well and excited to try um, out some South African food with your eyes. <laughs> um, so today we're doing a food tour of South Africa and you can hear the Africa uh, song by Toto. Um, this always reminds me of home so I hope it reminds all the South Africans who are abroad of home. Um, just a beautiful song and Anyone who's going to South Africa, I hope it gets you in the mood. <laughs> so let's get going. So I'm going to introduce some new foods, but before we do that, I'm just going to talk about South Africa's history and how that's influenced the food in South Africa. Um, so we call the Rainbow Nation, and you can see the flag. It's like a rainbow, so colorful. Um, and we are called the Rainbow Nation because... We all come from different backgrounds, we're all different colors, we have all different religions, but our hope is that we can all live together in peace and harmony. Um, we have Indian people, we have Af uh, black African people who um, come from different parts of Africa um, over the last couple of hundred years, um, Chinese people, Cape Malay people, who are, and many mixed people um, in South Africa. Um, so this is very important to note that we have all these different types of cuisines that have had an impact on South African cuisine. Um, and it's not just fry meat, um, which is, you know, barbecue meat, not just that is South African. Um, there's a lot more to South African cuisine. And we all share each other's cultures. We all eat each other's food. And so I think that's what is, is, is quite nice. Is that we've, we've learned to share that and, and, um, form real bonds over the food and one another over the, these um, cultural delicacies. So the first region we look at is the Cape. And the Cape is the region that I'm from. So it stretches from Cape Town to Port Elizabeth roughly. And Cape Town is called the mother city. That's why I picture my mother there. <laughs> because the mother must have the best food, right? Mothers always cook the best food. Your mother should, hopefully. <laughs> um, so, yes, you can see the picture of Cape Town and some of the best food I feel is from Cape Town, maybe because I spent a lot of time there. Um, anyone else who feels differently, you know, from other regions, please just like send me messages and maybe I'll make another video with other foods in future or you can make a video and, and just share the link. Um, with everyone would like to learn more. So um, I'm from Port Elizabeth. It's a friendly, windy city. It's very windy. And we also have some food. We share a lot of the same food with Cape Town. Um, but there's some things that I in particular know where to get it in, in my city. So I'll, I'll share that. So the first food is the Gatsby. And I call it the Great Gatsby because it's so big. And it's got you know it's got spicy chips or fries as some would call it um there would be meat in there some a lot of sauce um some salad it's delicious it's got everything in it like like what do you want put it in there it's not really a sub it's different to a sub because it's slightly spicy and it's got the chips in very good shareable not shareable if you don't want to be shareable absolutely amazing then the next thing is baboti. This is a Cape Malay food. So some people were brought as slaves from Malaysia, India, different parts of um, Africa, Indonesia, um, the Philippines. They were brought as slaves. I'm also mixed with that other people. And um, they would, they came together with their cuisines from their different uh, areas that they were from. Predominantly Malay influence on the food. So um, this is, this particular picture of Bobwati, it's mince, and then on the top layer is egg. And then um, another very famous food or enjoyable food is the cook sister. And the cook sister is, has a potato base, not just flour or anything. And we put some spices in there like cinnamon, ginger, cloves, that kind of thing. Um, it gives it that flavor. And then it's fried and then rolled um, in a bit of sugar and then coconut ice as well. Or dipped in, in kind of syrup and then rolled in the coconut. So it's very good. And then we have pickled fish. It's fish that's pickled in um, onions and vinegar as well. And 
that's left over a day or two and it's more delicious. It's very delicious the next day. We don't eat it on the day that it's made. The s'more, the s'more is tomatoes and onions, a little bit of sugar in the mixture. It's kind of like a chutney and um, with chopped or sliced um, sausage. And then it's usually served with steamed bread. My mother always makes this and I can eat for days, <laughs> never get full. <laughs> um, I eat this as a veg vegetarian meal. We use soya sausages. So a lot of the dishes we have an ad a, a vegetarian ad adaptation as well. And then just Eastern Food Bazaar. Um, this is an, a place in the middle of Cape Town where you can get decently priced food. Um, Malay food, Indian food, Middle Eastern food, a lot of regions. Um, and it's just really good. And yeah, you can try out the samosas. The samosas are more Cape Malay based. They're not like the Indian ones. The fillings are different as well. Um, in South Africa, we've, we, we've adapted and we've created new um, fillings. So it's always good to try all the different ones, the cocktail samosas. And then there's biryani. Biryani is a very um, delicious rice, spicy rice dish with um, chicken usually or lamb or potatoes and some peas and different vegetables inside it. It's very good. Um, definitely try that. Sometimes it's served with the yogurt on the side. You can see some yogurt here. Um, it's, a, it's usually not just yogurt, but um, yeah, so that's very, very good. Definitely very good Cape Malay food. You can't talk about Cape Town or the Cape area without talking about wine. Wine is very important um, export as well. And a lot of people enjoy the, our, our wine. Talking from experience abroad, I personally prefer South African wine to any other wine um, <laughs> worldwide. I mean, that is also affordable as well. Um, and in Cape Town or in Franschhoek, because it's just outside Cape Town, we have a wine tram and you can go through all the wine farms and have a day of tasting. So, wow. And also we have pies. We have kudu pies. And that's the animals of kudu. And we have kudu pies, warthog, venison, lamb, mint, chicken, roast chicken. We have sausage rolls. We have all kinds of pies. Probably the British influence has resulted in all of these savory pies. Very good. Hong Kong chicken is local to my city, Port Elizabeth, and it's you can go to Hong Kong and you won't get this. <laughs> People from my city have tried and they've been disappointed. So you can only get it in Port Elizabeth. Should be called Port Elizabeth chicken. Then we have roasted wood. Roasted wood is basically bread. So we need the dough and then we put it on the fire. And then it, it you know, bread in all made in different ways is taste different and this is really good and then you have chicken tikka brai um, in the street near where I'm from in the town um, Port Elizabeth um, but in the suburb that I live in there's a lot of people who have immigrated from northern India and Pakistan and they make the chicken chick tikka in the street and you go at night and you just like everyone you know stops off and buys from them and it's really good decent prices and really delicious meal and it usually comes with salad and a roll and then we have curry bunnies curry bunnies are fit cook now what well kind of curry bunnies are the fit cook and then the curries inside and a fit cook is the bread um so basically same you know as the roasted words you take the bread dough but instead you roll it in little balls and you fry it so you can do all kinds of things with bread. <laughs> we found it. And inside of it, as I said, is the curry. Really good. No bunnies involved. No bunnies harmed. And then Cog Bay. So this, this region has been voted um, worldwide as one of the quaintest love villages. It's, it's so cool. Um, there's just so much to do there. It's just so, it's just, you, you feel so cool just going there. Um, and it has a lot of, good food as well so the, I usually go to Kalki's. Kalki's has really um, it's usually for the local people and this it's kind of like in a tent it's not an actual actual store and always good to go there great food um, but I took a picture of lucky fish and ships this is along the coast in Cape Town this is a, a seafood store um, fish and ship shop and 
they have a platter and I have to take a picture of the platter. Um, I got the platter and it has two pieces of hake, some calamari, and quite a decent portion of calamari, I might add, so for, um, for prawns and then some large, a large chips and then it comes with a drink as well. So definitely something to try. The platters are, I think, very unique to South Africa in what they have, the decent size and how they're prepared. Um, so I haven't seen the exactly the same kind of fish bladder elsewhere. Maybe you have, but um, I haven't been impressed with other fish bladders. In Johannesburg, the crew in the interior, we have a lot of um, brine meat, which is barbecued meat. And you can see that here. Um, the fire is a very important part of South African culture. Um, and you can see this pot as well, the black pot. So the food is put in like you could make a stew and you put in the pot and then you put that pot over the fire on a stick over the fire. And then it'll also be um, brying the meat as well, barbecuing the meat um, and the sausages as well on the fire. And those would be marinated, that meat would be marinated the South African way to make it. And that's why it would be a braai. Um, the, the meat does taste, does taste different. And then just to show you the egg, the big egg at the bottom, um, that's an ostrich egg. Um, if you, you can make an omelette from that. Um, if you go to the crew, you can probably taste ostrich egg. And then there's steak, ostrich steak. And just to show you the picture of the ostrich running. So it's a lean meat. So people quite enjoy um, that as a lean meat. And then we have burvors. It's kind of a, uh, a very special South African recipe. Of, it's kind of a very thick sausage. Um, rolled like that and very unique and to South Africa. And we have kotaban. The kotaban, I would usually have the cheese and chip kotaban. I had this in Soweto and then it had some chakalaka inside, which is like a curry inside, um, a vegetable curry. Um, but you can get it with the Russian as well inside. Many people um, in Soweto like this and make this and it's really decently priced. There's a fricadal that's meat, minced meat, with herbs inside and fried. It's a Dutch dish. And then milk tart. It's milk in a tart form. And it's so good with a little bit of cinnamon sprinkled on top. Mm. Puck. That is corn flour mixed to make like a starch. Like that would be our starch on the side instead of, say, rice or potatoes or bread. That would be the starch on your, on your plate at a bribe. And then the last picture is a sazati, and that is basically a kebab, but marinated in sauces, South African recipe, um, and bride put on the fire. So the next location is the east coast of South Africa, and that's Durban. And they're known for bunny chow, and you can see the picture there. And it's 100% rabbit free, just to put you at ease. No rabbits were harmed in the taking of this picture. <laughs> um, so it's a half a loaf of bread and inside is curry and it can be a chicken curry, lamb curry, um, vegetarian curry. Basically it's curry inside the bread and you eat it, you bake it off the pieces eat, uh, and you eat the whole thing. And it's half a loaf of bread that they kind of dug up and then they put the rest of the bread on top that they dug up. And that's based, actually that they say comes from the era when people used to work in the sugar cane fields and they used to have to take food to work. And it's a very easy way to take your food to work in your bread and eat everything up. There's lamb curry that's very popular in Durban. Fruit, avocados, bananas, mangoes are grown in this area. So it's very delicious and you can buy it for really cheap. And there's the cheese and chip roti. Very good, very fattening probably, a lot of carbs, but so good. Roti is, you know, we make we make roti this way, kind of round, um, we wrap it up and we do so many things with the roti. Uh, I think a lot more than it would be in India because in India you'd break the roti up and you'd eat food like that. We, we changed it up and we rolled it up and made it a little bit easier, more convenient to carry around and travel with. And then there's chakalaka, chakalaka, uh, Kind of chopped vegetables, could be carrots, some beans, um, and then it's really spicy. And there's a good sauce there. And it's very unique, and many people would eat that um, 
many African people, um, I think it's a local recipe. Um, but everyone eats it nowadays. A lot of these dishes are Indian because Indian people, there's a, um, the largest population of Indian people outside India are in Durban because we were brought as indentured workers from India um, maybe about 200 years ago, maybe nearly now. So that's why there's a lot of Indian influence in that region. But the Zulu people are also a bit, um, very big population in that region. And so they have a big influence in the culture as well. So they also have samp and beans, um, very important part of the culture. And they also obviously eat fried meat, so that's barbecued meat. And a lot of things that I talked about before, like the pup and the ungumboti, I don't pronounce it exactly right, but this is a traditional um, beer. Now, grocery stores nationwide will have uh, these snacks. One, thing's to, um, one thing to note to, is that there's Nando's, it is from South Africa. And actually, I went outside um, in Manchester just now and I saw them advertising South African food, but it wasn't Nando's, it was a different company that kind of uh, was promoting South African peri-peri chicken because of the chicken store. And um, they do have Nando's here as well and in the US and Malaysia, but I've never tasted Nando's which is as good as in South Africa. Definitely something to try. For those who haven't tried before, the knickknacks, so there's some cheese chips, and then there's rusks and rooibos tea. Rooibos tea is really good for kids. Um, my mother used to give it to me because it's caffeine free when I was um, a baby. So babies drink it as well in South Africa. And rusks are just hard cookies and you just dunk it and eat it. I always have to have that. Creamy meal, it's a porridge made of corn. So good, we add a little bit of butter. Yeah, and then cheddars, like little biscuits, kind of like Ritz. Um, biltong, the rovors, these are meats that are dried um, and killed. And uh, they, the rovors is more round and long, and the biltong is a little bit like this. It's sliced. And then lastly, jungles are its energy crunch. Um, that's a kind of muesli, but usually they have all kinds of oat-related um, things in the market so I really enjoy that range um, everyone's grown up with it and um, it's a lot what a lot of people miss <laughs> so that's all for today and thank you for watching and please send me you know in the comments put any foods that you really really miss about home share because other people want to hear about it other people will visit visiting South Africa want to try it so say where you ate it and also um, other people who are thinking of coming home can add it to their list of to-do list so see you bye everyone and thanks for watching see you next time